I wanted to ask you, what in your view is um, good quality cap captioning? What are the most common errors and how can they be avoided? Okay, yeah, thank you. That's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I don't know originally that I approached captioning in terms of yes or no, this is right and this is wrong. I mean, there are clearly, there are clearly wrong captions, misspellings or captions that are dropped or, or missed, um, you know, just, just errors in the captioning file. But I, I've tended to approach captioning in terms of choices that captioners are making. I've been really fascinated by non-speech captioning or sound identifiers, all of those captions in parentheses or brackets that it seems like, captioners tell me anyway, that they have a lot of control over. And I'm interested in those decisions that captioners make about what to caption and how to caption it. I still think there are some common errors that I want to um, that I want to point out, but I think I've been more interested just in, you know, why, why has it been captioned this way and not this way? Uh, and, and both ways might be right in their own in their own ways, but they might create different meanings or different interpretations um, for viewers. And that's a little different for me than just this is right and this is this is wrong. But I think you know some common errors, things I've been interested in include missing speaker identifiers when somebody's speaking off screen and it's not clear who's speaking, or if two people are speaking at the same time, and you've got both of those lines of speech at the bottom center of the screen with just a preceding hyphen. Uh, I may not be clear who's speaking which line. So I think speaker identification is, is something that needs to be closely attended to. I think confusing speaker identifiers or speaker identifiers that might not be exactly appropriate. Um, I, maybe I'll give an example um, in, a, in a minute or two, but confusing speaker identifiers. I mentioned bottom center captions. You know, so captions that are not well placed or captioning interfaces that don't support, you know, robust screen placement. So captions that are just at the bottom center, I think, can create some problems for, for readers and viewers. Boilerplate captions aren't necessarily wrong, but I think at times captioners can rely on, you know, they just go to those captions that are familiar to them when, when describing non-speech. Like in, in a horror movie, it might be eerie music eerie music that just, you know, is repeated dozens of times over the move over the course of the movie. These aren't necessarily wrong, but they might, you know, they might show kind of a lack of, maybe a lack of creativity or diversity in description. Captions that are too fast, of course. I mean, there's been a lot of work, a lot of work on uh, caption timing um, and uh, studies of, uh, you know, eye tracking studies, as you know, that, uh, you know, try to figure out how uh, you know how what speed is is uh, is okay and what speed is too fast. These studies go back into the 90s, as you know. But captions that are too fast. I I, I recently I've been um, I've been just tracking reading speeds over thousands of captions. Just doing this in Excel, so you can you know you can kind of automate reading speed. And you know maybe 30 percent of the captions in a two-hour movie might be over 200 words per minute. I don't have the exact calculation, but there are quite a few captions that are just way too way too fast. Uh, missed sonic illusions, I think, are a problem. Um, so, you know, maybe they're not just five notes, but maybe they have a kind of deeper, deeper meaning. Uh, the example I use in my book are the five, the five note motif in Close Encounters, which is like a 40 year old movie. Um, but other movies have drawn upon these famous, this famous five note sequence. And captioners really need to understand that these are not just five notes, but they have a kind of deeper deeper meaning. They need to be captioned in terms of the, you know, the Close Encounters theme or the, the five note motif from Close Encounters. So missed sonic illusions, I think, can be a problem. Uh, language identifiers that don't include the transcribed speech. This seems to be a big problem on Twitter, uh, where people are complaining, rightfully so, about, um, you know, just uh, language identifiers like speaks in foreign language. Uh, it's not clear what language that is. Um, or even, you know, speaks in Spanish, but the Spanish words are not transcribed. 